Last month, the State Human Rights Commission in Indian administered Kashmir ordered the government to reopen the investigation of a 20-year-old mass rape case in which Indian army men were accused of raping more than 30 women in Kunan Pashpura village during a crackdown. FSRN's Shanawaz Khan visited the village and found that the attack two decades ago still haunts the community. On the night of February 23, 1991, the Indian Army entered Kunan Pushpura village in northern Kashmir. Men were summoned out of their homes and detained at a few spots in the village. Villagers say they were then beaten and tortured throughout the night. The women left behind in their homes were also a target. Only God knows what happened to us that night. Salima, which is not her real name, a middle-aged woman from the village, says she is embarrassed to describe her ordeal again and again. For the last 20 years, we have been narrating our tale, giving testimonies. Nothing came out of it. It only embarrasses us more. After the men had been taken out, the troops entered homes and allegedly gang raped the women. More than 30 cases were reported to the police, but residents say the number of survivors was much higher as many women did not come forward. There were screams everywhere, from this house, the neighboring houses, from almost every house in the village. My unmarried sister was here too that night. She was raped too, but I chose not to give her name. I was worried about her future. I thought she would face problems getting married. Twenty years after the incident, the horrors of the dark night haven't left the village. Many gang-raped women faced medical complications. A pregnant woman who jumped out of a window to escape the rapists later bore a child with a broken limb. Kunan Poshpura came to be defined by the night of February 23, 1991 and became known as the raped village. Abildar, an elderly resident, listed some of the consequences. The education of our children suffered, and in schools outside of the village, they were taunted for hailing from Kunan Pushpura. We have to marry our daughters within the village. As people from other villages do not prefer to marry here, we have to face taunts. That night, Dar says, he was tied and beaten brutally, while back home, his wife, mother, daughter-in-law, and sisters-in-law were gang-raped. Dar's mother was in her 90s, and his newlywed daughter-in-law was just 18. It was only 11 days since my marriage. I had returned that morning for my first post-wedding visit to parents. Just a new bride I was. The beautiful bride was the last one to be freed from the ordeal. The troops entered the house at 10 p.m. and left the next morning. It was mayhem. The next morning, the troops took me along when the crackdown was lifted. I was released much later, three villages away. Last month, the State Human Rights Commission directed the reopening of the investigation into the case after hearing police from 36 survivors from the village. It also ordered a monetary compensation of roughly 4,000 U.S. dollars to each named victim, besides action against a former official who had ordered the case shut. Our honor was not to be sold for $4,000. Our mothers, sisters, we all want justice. We want to see the troops being punished. Whatever the law for such crimes is in India, let them impose the same on their troops. The Commission's directive is not binding on the state government, while the Indian Army enjoys impunity from prosecution in civil courts under the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. For the villagers, justice looks as elusive as it ever was, while the horrors of the night refuse to go away. Shanawaz Khan, FSRN, Kunan Poshpura.